USPAP, page 232. Competency rule continued. Number 104. Competency statement in the report. Question. Does USPAP require an appraiser to include a competency statement in all reports? Response. No. USPAP does not require that an appraiser provide a statement of competency in all reports. Only when the appraiser accepts an assignment with a lack of knowledge and slash or experience does the competency rule require the report to contain a description of the appraiser's lack of knowledge and slash or experience and the steps taken to complete the assignment competently. Number 105, errors and omissions insurance. Question, does USPAP require appraisers to be covered by errors and omissions E&O insurance? Response, USPAP does not address E&O insurance. However, if an appraiser is required to have E&O insurance as a matter of law or regulation, he or she must comply with that requirement under the competency rule, which requires recognition of and compliance with laws and regulations that apply to the appraiser or the assignment. Page 233, Jurisdictional Exemption Rule. Number 106, Application of the Jurisdictional Exemption Rule. Question, when does the Jurisdictional Exemption Rule apply in an assignment? Response, the Jurisdictional Exemption Rule exempts appraisers from the part or parts of USPAP for which compliance is precluded by law or regulation. The rule applies any time there is a conflict between the requirements of USPAP and the applicable law or regulation of a jurisdiction. An appraiser using the jurisdictional exemption rule must properly identify and comply with the law or regulation that precludes compliance with USPAP. In addition, the appraiser must disclose in the report the part of USPAP that is voided by that law or regulation and also cite in the report the specific law or regulation that precludes compliance with USPAP. The comment to the jurisdictional exemption rule includes language that helps appraisers recognize laws and regulations. However, in every case, it is ultimately the responsibility of the appraiser and not the client or other intended users to determine whether the use of the jurisdictional exemption rule is appropriate. Number 107, USPAP compliance and jurisdictional exemption. Question, I am a real property appraiser and government employee. The agency I work for 
wants me to provide a preliminary estimate of value. The agency policy states that this work is not an appraisal and is not covered by USPAP because of a jurisdictional exemption. Should I comply with USPAP when I prepare a preliminary estimate of value? Response. This question raises a number of issues related to USPAP compliance and the application of the jurisdictional exemption rule. Based on your identification as an appraiser, you should comply with USPAP. This is because an individual's public identification as an appraiser establishes an exemption, no, expectation that valuation services will be performed in compliance with USPAP. You must comply with USPAP when required by law, regulation, or agreement, even if the agency policy does not require USPAP compliance or other applicable law or regulation might require compliance. The jurisdictional exemption rule cannot be used to resolve this type of USPAP compliance question unless the agency policy is determined to be law or regulation. USPAP does not establish who or which assignments must comply. Thus, the jurisdictional exemption rule cannot be applied to a decision to comply with USPAP. To the contrary, a jurisdictional exemption occurs when an applicable law or regulation precludes compliance with USPAP. Therefore, no decision is necessary. Another issue raised by this question relates to the USPAP requirements that apply to a preliminary estimate of value. USPAP does not define preliminary estimate of value. However, it is the nature of the service not the label applied that defines the service. An appraisal is defined as the act or process of developing an opinion of value, an opinion of value. If the service is an appraisal as defined in USPAP, then standards one and two apply to the preliminary estimate of value.